Today we're in Gresham, Oregon for the Track Town Track and Field Series. For Leo's Running and Racing, my name is Leo Shoemaker. I hope you enjoy the show. The stands are empty right now, but they figure about three to 4,000 people will show up to cheer on the athletes here at Mount Hood Community College. We're talking to Michael Riley about the Track Town USA event here. It's the second in the series, right? That's correct. Now the last one will be New York and that'll be the finals. What was the first one like? The first one at Stanford was a great event on uh, June 29th. We had amazing performances from the athletes. We had great crowd interaction between the athletes. We had uh, an all-comers meet before. We had corporate relays. We had kids uh, running 200 meters on the track with the athletes at the end. It had a great combination of um, athleticism uh, and community involvement. Trying to inspire people to get out there and run, the kids especially, right? Get them started young, right? Exactly. We'd like yeah. to get uh, boys and girls to understand that running, jumping, throwing is pretty awesome. Uh -huh. uh, and really, for the athletes, it's an opportunity for them to compete in the summertime when they're in their best condition in front of American fans. And hopefully, by connecting with especially the boys and girls, they get a little name recognition out there. Well, can you imagine what an athlete would do to inspire a kid? I mean, hand them a pair of shoes, show them how to throw a shot put. And I was watching somebody uh, teach the kids how to throw a javelin. Get them started young, right? Exactly. I think all athletes at a high level uh, will tell you a story about how they got involved uh, in the sport. And quite honestly, they're all excited to figure out how they can get the next generation uh, up and going. Uh, the athletes are the ones really that want uh, the connection with the fans. They want the connection uh, with the kids. Uh, and hopefully this provides a good platform for them to be able to do that. Michael, how'd you get involved? Uh, well, I've been with Track Town uh, for the past uh, four years uh, and working on a lot of the major championship events uh, at Hayward Field, partnering together with the University uh, of Oregon. But this really is an opportunity to try to take some of those learnings there and hopefully get it installed in cities across the United States. Now the idea started where? Did you guys sit down and have dinner and then think up this plan? Or there was an old look back in the old days, I remember that. Well, I think uh, Vin and I have been working together since uh, the early 90s and when we were at Stanford University in the early 90s and the early 2000s. Uh, the idea of trying to create domestic opportunities for American athletes was something that was important. For us, we work with the local organizing committee uh, in Stanford to have a couple of professional uh, meets, and this, I think, is just the, the logical evolution of trying to continue on that trend. What about the team names? Who thought of the team names? There's four of them, right? Team names was a long and involved uh, process with a lot of research, a lot of good focus groups, a lot of good input, uh, and we were real pleased with the way they turned out. And give us the names of the teams. So we've got the San Francisco Surge, the Portland Pulse, the Philadelphia Force, and, of course, the New York Empire. And it's a great, great uh, assortment of athletes, but you're also having a concept that's really unusual, men and women competing together. What do the men and women think about that? I think if, if you see it in the press conference and you see it on social media and you just talk to, to any of them, uh, I think they all like team-based competition. They've all got great memories of competing in college. Uh, many of them have great memories uh, and stories of competing as part of the U.S. national team. Uh, where, of course, they're all, in, in all those environments uh, in our sport, they're still chasing individual important uh, achievement, but I think they attach a different level of importance to it when they're competing as part of a team. And shot putter, gold medalist, Michelle Carter. Michelle Carter. Said that she wants athletes. to play against the guys and see how good she is against the guys. I'd love that. It's a wonderful idea. She's <laughs> going to uh, team up with her uh, Philadelphia Force teammate uh, today, and I think all the teams will be battling it out. It's going to be a great competition. And how many athletes do you expect? Uh, we've got 72 uh, athletes across the four teams competing today. Mm -hmm. uh, we had 72 in Stanford on Thursday, and then we'll have all 144 together uh, competing uh, as full teams in New York on July 6th. If people want to get involved, you know, bring their kids into the program, uh, or get more information, is there a Facebook or a, a web page? Best way to find out about what's going on is tracktownsummerseries.com. Thank you so much. Thank you. Michael had a silver medal in the, six, in the 84 Olympics. Her throw was 
59 feet, 5 inches and 3 quarters. Whiting's going right now. Big ball. And they use surveying equipment to measure the jump. See the guy right there in the surveying camera? And the guy with the marker here. Make sure they're accurate. 67 foot, 2 inches, and 75. 3 quarters of an inch for Whiting of Philadelphia. Six, 
since USA's. I just kind of did some training runs and took a mental reset. Ate some crap food this week. I just needed, you know, I've been well behaved for, you know, two or three months. Like really disciplined. And I just needed a week to like reset, uh, both physically and mentally. So, you know, my coach said, I don't care if you run 150 today. Uh, we just need to get a hard effort in. Track Club Masters. How many people are here? Uh, we have about a half dozen members today that are competing and just having some fun. And who else is running with you? Uh, Renee St. Cyr is running the 400 with Hey, Renee. Hey. How fun. I yeah. mean, you're seeing the young athletes who will be potential Olympic stars. You're seeing your sobs out here competing and having a good time. Beautiful weather. It's a fantastic day to be out here and to get our legs stretched and get off the couch. So we, we enjoy it. Yeah, we encourage more people to join us next year. Yeah. Do you have a Facebook page we can invite people? We do. We do. You can go to uh, pdxmasterstrackandfield.com and that's our website address. Well, thank you both. Have a good race. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Dennis Rene, a runner. Shooting an all covers mate. 50.58 is the time for the corner meter. Well, Dennis, you had a great run. I did. It was fun. What was your time? 63 and change. How'd you feel? 
look tired. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm 63 and change. <laughs> no, not really that bad. It's a lot of fun. It's refreshing to come out and run with the kids uh -huh. and, uh, and uh, just be out there with them. Good. Thank you so much. I'm glad you did the race. It was fun seeing you. You're very welcome. Thank you. Hey. Hi, my name is Leo Shoemaker, and today on Leo's Running the Racing, we'll be talking to Coach Nash Jimenez on how to train right, how to be careful, how to have uh, the inspiration to do the right thing, uh, what inspires you to run, and a little bit of history on Nash. Hope you enjoy the show. Back to or just front? Just front. And then back. Just the front. Take two steps. Two steps and then lift. Because you can't take three and switch legs. <laughs> this, this right here about helps your glutes, also your quads. <laughs> Most people don't say that about me, Tyler. Stretch them out really good. I heard back. Oh, As she's supposed to be. What's this one called, Coach? Well, what this does, it gives you a little, like you're running with it as you're stretching here, your glutes. But it, excuse me, all it is is balance, up and back. So that way you have the forward movement here and forward as you run here. Back. It looks like a hard one. It is. It's hard. It's a balance. Most of all, all what we're doing here is all, all balance, working on balance. Side side. 
So Nash, name off your crew from left to right. What, what, what it does, if you notice when you see them, it develops your, it gets your calves, your hamstrings, and it develops balance, you hold it for two seconds, it also gets right in your hips. So who's your crew from left to right? right. Name them off. Okay, we have Tabitha on the left, we have Linnell, we have Ashley, we have Joe, and we have Speedy Tyler and his wife Jennifer. Thank you. And Ashley's a realist. I'm a realist. She's a realist. <laughs> I like that. I, I, that's good. Not complaining. Go ahead and give me a laugh around. Just cool down. A mile. Give us a mile. The realist says we need a mile. It's cool down. Okay, now after we do some of the stretches, now we go take a lap to loosen everything up. I, I was trying to think of another athlete since Steve Prefontaine that has really captured the hearts and minds of Oregon. <laughs> you were born in Portland, um, you were raised in Bend, Oregon, you went to U of O, uh, currently live in Eugene, of course. Um, for those who might not be as familiar with Ashton's accomplishments, uh, he won five NCAA championships for the Ducks, uh, won the 2010 Bowerman Award, which is track and field's Heisman. Um, tr uh, the, the Heisman Trophy for track and field. Won six international gold medals, uh, including the 2012 decathlon title uh, in Beijing, or sorry, in London, uh, and recently had the world indoor hep uh, heptathlon title, and of course has uh, the world records uh, in both. And just going through his marks of the, both the decathlon and heptathlon are known as sort of being the world's greatest athletes and has a, a 10.2 100 meters. This is all from his world record, a 25-10 long jump, 47-7 shot put, 6-7 high jump, 45 flat 400. So these are athletes that can literally run, jump, and throw uh, better than most people can just do one of the events. Um, what does it mean to you to, to sort of take that mantle from Steve Prefontaine or really you know, live and breathe being an Oregon athlete? where in Oregon, I'm saying that's, that's the sport, and you get to live and breathe that and we're raised there. What, what does that mean to you? I didn't really realize uh, the history that Oregon had in athletics until I went to the University of Oregon. And it's not just about the University of Oregon, it's about Oregon as a whole. And uh, a lot of people, when I was in college and started getting good, kept asking me, what is it about Oregon that, you know, this and that with athletes? I'm thinking, what are you guys talking about? <laughs> and people would keep, naming off these athletes and all these accomplishments and kind of how this state that's seemingly small. Um, I remember growing up and thinking, oh yeah, we're that state, I would describe to people where I was from, we're above California. <laughs> because everybody knows where California is, nobody knows, knows anything about Oregon. And I grew up thinking, Oregon's not known for anything. Like, we're just here, you know, there's Washington, has Seattle, California has obviously everything, and here we are. But uh, we have this rich history in athletics that I never really knew about. And I suppose to be part of it, it's uh, just like in track and field, when you do something in track and field, there's people who have come before you, and then there's you, and then there's people who come after you. And so, the same thing for Oregon. Uh, honored to be a part of it, and hopefully it'll continue on uh, after I'm there, but I don't know, there's, maybe somebody should do some really empirical research on that. Something in the water, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> Well, I know like, like Jeff Farrell, you had some pretty influential coaches uh, through high school. Um, can you speak to that? And especially, you, you did a number of sports. And I, I know one of the first things you wanted to accomplish in life was become a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. And so, but can you speak to, to that and the coaches in high school that led you to do, of course, this crazy 10 event, two day competition? Absolutely. So it's really, when I tell these stories, I think of how big of an impact television had on my life. <laughs> because I would see things on TV, like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, or like somebody running a football touchdown, or somebody doing a long jump. And as soon as I would see it, I would say, I want to do that, and I'd go outside and imitate it. And the first thing that I can remember imitating was the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. And it's just, there was something about the way they moved. And that's what I had always been attracted to visually, was uh, 
the way that somebody moved. And I just, like the fighting and the flipping of the Ninja Turtles. Um, <laughs> but eventually I saw some other stuff, and one of those things was track and field. And it was a long jump, and I went outside and I just copied the move the guy was doing. The guy happened to be really good, it was Carl Lewis. <laughs> we all know. <laughs> and uh, so that kind of segues into doing athletics in high school. Um, the thing I was good at in high school that kind of caught the eye of coaches was the long jump. And it was because I was doing it like Carl Lewis, the running in the air type thing. And in Oregon, you just didn't see that. And they said, where did you learn that? And I said, oh, I saw this guy on TV do it. <laughs> and so, sorry, I think I have something in my eye. But uh, somehow, I've always been, I've always had really good coaches, and I'm not sure why, but they were able to figure out that whatever they described, I would do exactly what they described. And so I think after years of being coached, I've realized that um, I vet their coaching really well. Because if I do exactly what they say, and it doesn't work, they have to go rethink what they <laughs> told me to do. Because I can just, I do it. And um, I was lucky enough to, I think, have really good coaches who weren't so up here with maybe egos or this is the right way to do things, that they were able to figure out that, man, maybe the way I'm doing something isn't right, or know the right thing to do, if that makes sense. Um,